Today I'm harvesting all of the garlic that I planted last fall. I'm in zone 6A slash 7B, so we plant the garlic in the fall. If you're interested in learning how to plant garlic, check out my video, I'll link it above. Um, but for harvesting garlic, what you wanna do is, um, first you have to know when to harvest. So whenever you're um, checking your garlic plants to see if they're ready to harvest, you wanna look for several leaves that have died back. You don't want the whole entire stalk to have died back, but you want the bottom few leaves to have um, shriveled up and uh, dried out. Once you have seen this sign, you are ready to go ahead and harvest your garlic. Now my garlic behind me, I let it go a little bit too long. I had been traveling for my sister's wedding, so I didn't get to harvest it as early as I wanted to, but today I'm gonna go ahead and harvest what I have in the garden. The risk you run with letting the entire stalk dry out is that sometimes the bulb itself will start to separate. I went ahead before this video and pulled out one of the garlic bulbs and I didn't see anything separating and so um, everything looks good. I'm hoping that the rest look as good as this one. When you're harvesting your garlic, you don't want to just pull out the garlic by its stalk. What you want to do is you want to use either a trowel or maybe a bedding fork to loosen up the soil around the bulbs and then pull them out of the soil. You're going to be keeping the stalk intact for the curing process, so you don't want to risk ripping that off or damaging the bulb. You might be tempted to wash off the dirt from the garlic bulbs, but I wouldn't recommend doing this because it will encourage mold and rot. I've harvested all of my garlic and there were several bulbs where the cloves started to separate from the bulb itself. So I'm gonna let these cure with all of the rest of the garlic and then I will make sure to use this first. The issue with the cloves separating is that there's not that tight seal with the skin. So this is what you wanna use first because it will go bad quicker than the other garlic that you're storing. If you're wondering what variety of garlic I planted, I planted a soft neck variety. I don't know the exact name of it, but you can plant either soft neck or hard neck. Hard neck is typically planted in um, colder regions. We live in a region where we get some snow, but it's not so cold that I can't plant a soft neck. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more about hard neck versus soft neck, check out that other video that I posted earlier. I'll also put it in the description. Um, but the main reason why I planted the soft neck is because I want to braid them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set these in a shady area for a couple of days and then at that point I'll go ahead and braid them. So this is my temporary makeshift area for letting these sit and dry out a bit before I braid them. We have this pallet behind here that has some old slate on it, but what I did is I just took some stakes that I had that were left over from my garden. I just leaned it against this pallet and then I'm placing the garlic on top of it. The key for the garlic to start drying out and curing is to have enough airflow. So with this setup, I definitely have enough airflow um, and I'll come back in a couple of days and then start braiding this garlic. The garlic has been drying for four days now. So before I braid the garlic together, what I'm doing is I'm knocking off any of this excess dirt. You can use a coarse sponge or a brush. I honestly wish that I had a brush, but I only have a sponge, so that's what I'm using. The goal is just to get some of those big clumps off before you start braiding it. You don't want to knock off too many layers of the skin because that is the protective layer for storing, but the idea is just to get some of that dirt off. You want to start with two bulbs. You're going to cross the stems and then you're going to place another bulb in the center between those stems. 
Your fourth bulb will go to one side, but the stem itself will go in the middle. At this point, you will cross over one of the stems. Then you will grab another bulb and place it on the opposite side, once again placing the stem in the middle and then crossing over the opposite side. Your sixth bulb will go in the middle and then stem is in the middle and then you cross over that. And then you just continue this process with as many bulbs as you want until you decide to just braid the stems themselves. Once you get to the top of the braid, you'll take the two outer portions of the braid and then tie them over the center portion. This part is really easy, but if you feel like it's too much, you can always just use a piece of string or twine. Once you have your garlic braided, you want to hang it in an area that has good ventilation until the stems completely dry out. At that point, you can cut off the roots and bring them inside to store them for the long term. If you want, you can also cut off the stems at that point, but if you have braided it, you might want to leave it as is and keep it as a decoration. Regardless if you're choosing to braid the stems or not, you need to leave the stems completely intact until they are dried out. The garlic is still using energy from those stems, so um, make sure that they're dry before cutting them off. That, at that same time, that's when you will cut off the roots. Now, as far as storing the garlic, you want to store it in an area that has some ventilation, so you can store it in a wire basket, some type of mesh bag, or just something that allows airflow. You want to prevent any type of wet environment because uh, that will cause some mold to grow. I hope you found this video to be helpful. Thank you so much for joining me today. Make sure to click the thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Also consider subscribing to our channel. We are on a journey to um, live a more sustainable life and learn new skills such as growing garlic. So uh, we'd love if you would join us. Thanks again.